officially call to order the Tuesday, July 5th, 2022 meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. And pursuant to the extension of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this public meeting of the Town of Bolton Conservation Commission is being conducted via remote participation, possibly for the last time. Uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can access this meeting while in progress by Zoom Video Communications, Inc. Members of the public attending this meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion of the hearing designated for public comment by telephone, cell phone, or personal computer using Zoom. Uh, and just as a reminder, some rules for that, uh, please use the raise hand or the chat function if you uh, wish to be addressed by the board. Um, we're going to allow people to stay on mute until they're actually addressed by the board. And if you could list your uh, username as your first and last name, that would be helpful. Um, all of that said, uh, per our tradition, we will start with a roll call of uh, members who are present. And uh, I am Brian Barraby. Bill Payne. Lori Stevenson. Paul Brandwalt. Jim Garrity. Rebecca Longball. All right, and first up this evening, um, the Bolton Conservation Commission will now continue the public hearing under Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bolton Bylaw Chapter 233 to consider a notice of intent uh, on behalf of 711-713 Main Street in situ architects, the demolition of the existing barn. Dad has uh, FaceTime video. Hey. Um, Rebecca, do we have an update or uh, do we have one of the applicants would be willing to give an update on this um, the, this request for an NOI? So where we were, Brian, is, I mean, we do have Tim Hess present from Studio in situ, yep. and we do have um, Craig Bobert present, who is the property owner. Um, just a quick summary is at the last meeting, the commission talked about a few items that they wanted to place into and be able to condition into the order of conditions as special conditions under the local bylaw and under the Wetlands Protection Act. So I have since drafted that language, I believe, and um, the applicant can add any information I'm missing here, but I believe that's really where it stood. It was the continuation just so that the commission had the ability to draft the conditions, review them, and then if they wanted any changes or wanted any um, edits to be made before a vote was made on those conditions, we'd be able to do it in an open hearing so that any um, individuals could weigh in on that as necessary. Yep, that is good. Thank you. Um, so that being said, um, I had no questions with the NOI as it's currently drafted and submitted this evening's meeting, um, but I want to open it up to commission members. Did anybody have any additional questions and or comments? Sorry, uh, not, oops. All right, not seeing any. Um, are there any members of the public here tonight to comment on this particular project? And not seeing any. All right. In that case, I, I think I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing for 711 slash 713 Main Street, the demolition of the existing barn. Do I hear a second for closing? Mr. Chair, if I may, just point of order before you take a vote to Go close. Ahead, <clears throat> Thanks for uh, taking just a, just a moment. Um, Tim Hess, Studio and C2 Architects, uh, the applicant for uh, Craig Bovere. Um, uh, we should share with you that we have uh, um, uh, a small adjustment that we need to ask you to consider um, in the in the application in the notice of intent as it was has been discussed uh, up to now and as is before you tonight uh, we uh, included some uh, uh, detail regarding the method of um, demolition by hand. Um, and having received now some bids to do that work um, uh, and uh, 
understanding a little bit differently uh, the value of the material that we had hoped to um, salvage from the barn. Um, it is our position that we we feel it, it would be important for us to preserve the latitude to do some of uh, so a, a greater fraction of the demolition with uh, kind of conventional demolition equipment than we had earlier suggested. Um, and uh, this would include um, uh, more or less conventional uh, excavation equipment and excavator. It would be parked in really the only position that would be available, and that is um, the spot we've indicated as the uh, the dump trailer location. An excavator would potentially be located in that spot. Um, uh, our sense is that the the commitment that we would be making uh, through this process with the Conservation Commission and the the conditions uh, placed on the process and, and the approval, if, if there were to be one, um, would remain uh, largely unchanged. And that is our, our commitment to the condition of the site and the um, protection of the resource uh, would, not, would not vary at all. But um, uh, just uh, ha having had a, a, a little bit of new information arrive to us having to do simply with the, the dollars and, and cents expense of the by hand process and the and the um, uh, the value of the salvage materials that it would yield for us that the calculus uh, may change a little bit and um, uh, the the really what would be valuable would be to know that um, it would be okay to do some uh, of the demo by by machine and conventional demolition means. Um, it, I want to just emphasize that um, uh, certainly the 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 um, our interest in uh, the barn and salvaging the material is really unchanged. Just just the the calculus of the kind of ratio of the cost benefit is is uh, not quite as clearly um, emphatic as as it initially looked. Sure. Um, sure. So anyway, I think, you can... I think I understand what you're asking. Um, yeah. And now, so, and and Rebecca, I'm, I'm going to ask your thoughts on this in a minute. Uh, but but I want to say uh, first, if so, if, if we were to allow the excavation via machinery, uh, but we would we would um, limit the machinery to the currently paved surface, which is where that truck was going to be. So yep. the machinery can only be on, well, in theory, can only be on the areas that are currently paved surface. Would that work for what you're trying to do? Yeah, I think it would. I mean, I, I don't okay. think there's a practical alternative. We, we, we don't okay. foresee a way to get any equipment around the other three sides of the barn. Yeah, and I don't think we'd want it getting in that area. And it was... Yeah. Um, all right, but so if, if you think that would work for you, I, I would then ask Rebecca, do you see additional problems or other things we may need to condition if we were to say that, you know, excavation machinery can be used, but it has to be limited to the paved area? Yes and no. I mean, <laughs> yeah, um, right. the machinery, it's... so the commission already commented at their last hearing that any, because there was mention of some minor equipment or potential use of very small machinery, so the commission had already suggested the condition of machinery shall be kept on the paved surfaces. Um, so that condition sort of already written into it. However, the scope at which the machinery is used, I think is what that's that other side of the question that I sort of uh, paused about. And that's relative to the resource areas and the impact potential to those resource areas and potential alterations. So you went from a manual removal where you have a lot of control over what's going on on site. You're over the perennial stream itself, although you do have the netting um, at least. And I guess understanding that the exact same safety measures and control measures along 
associated with pollution prevention and the debris control, all of that is still under the same method and scope aside from you're using machine versus manual. And there's a difference between how much control you have on a site, particularly where you're working over a resource area. So that, that's just what I would relate to the commission is you still have the same concern. It's that now you have equipment and machinery that you didn't have before. In addition to that, the conditions that were drafted that the commission has reviewed directly referenced what was written into the notice of intent regarding the um, protections that were drafted by the applicant and the individual they had reached out to. Um, the And I don't know if it was a contracted party or someone who just provided some insights on that process as far as manual removal. So I think it would be beneficial for the commission to see exactly what that scope is going to look like in the same format that was provided before, but just now relative to utilizing an excavator. And to be clear, and it I guess is a question through you, Mr. Chair, it was my understanding that the applicant was stating they're going to be using an excavator, not excavating. And I just want to make sure that that's clear because there's there at the last meeting, it was said that there's no disturbance to the bank and anything basically under the timbers that you're not excavating anything from the soils or ground alteration, it's removal of the structure. So I think the commission should get some clarification on that as well. Fair points. Um, to say the applicants, do, do you want to address what Rebecca just said about that? Sure, yeah, when, when I said excavator, I, I referred to you know, my understanding of what the equipment is called. It, it, I don't know what it's really called, um, but uh, no, it's, there's no change to the scope or our proposal. We're not now imagining that there's some excavation involved. It's uh, demolition related to the timber structure. Yeah. Okay. Um, other commission members have initial questions, thoughts, comments? Brian, it seems with an excavator, you'd have less control over demolition of that barn. So do we have any additional um, resources put in to protect the, the stream that's under it? That's a good question. I'll, I'll put that to the applicants. Uh, do, was there any thought to uh, any additional conditions that might need to be necessary with machinery removing, excavate, or not excavate, but removing, um, um, those materials. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the uh, uh, the tarp that we propose to straddle the stream. Um, you know, one thing that comes to mind is it is it may make some sense to uh, uh, install directly onto. I think what we've what we've been calling the channel, the stone channel or the masonry channel. Um, uh, it might make some sense to protect that uh, with some sheets of plywood um, beneath the net. Um, uh, other than that, I, I can't, I can't say anything's coming to mind uh, about what we do differently. Okay. Um, other commission members have initial thoughts, questions? Um, should I ask anybody here from the public tonight to comment on this? Yeah, seeing any. Um, all right. <laughs> Rebecca, <laughs> and, and it's a difficult yes. one to, to hit quickly. <laughs> Trying to think, uh, um, do, 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 what do you think would be appropriate additions, or do you think we can come up with appropriate additions this evening to say, you know, the use of an excavator to remove those, the use of a larger machinery to remove the wood and timber? Um, so as it's drafted currently, um, it does, so 
the commission doesn't want to be too specific on things because we do want to allow as far as the related protections to be somewhat flexible so that the applicant can resolve any issues that come up fairly quickly to cause remediation and stabilize the site. Um, so I think those that language is in there, as Tim stated, if it's if he's seeing the same scope of protections afforded to the property through use of an excavator and through use of a manual removal process, then that's already drafted into the document. But um, the commission has the ability to state, you know, use of an excavator for demolition, um, as long as it stay or something along that line. Um, stays outside of the 25 foot um, no disturb area or within paved area. Um, again, my, I think the, the additional protection, putting something a little bit heavier that would cover across the stream um, just temporarily while that work's being done might afford some additional protections that any lack of control the, again, difference between an excavator and hand removal might be, maybe that accommodates for it, I'm not sure. Um, but I think the commission has the ability to, if they want to add in or um, leave it as is and just the applicant has to meet those standards. The commission also has the ability, keep in mind, to say this site is too sensitive, you're required to do it manually removal because of the resource areas that are there. I'm not suggesting to do that, but the commission does have the ability to do so. All right. Um, thank you. you no, know, I appreciate you coming up with that relatively quickly, all of that. Um, I would say, um, Tim, would you be, and I'm gonna put it out to the commission too to get their thoughts and everything, but would you be amenable if we, if we increase the uh, allowance for machinery on site? Um, you, you already said you'd be fine keeping it to the paved area but um, putting in additional protections over the stream, like a plywood, like you said, a, a more substantial covering for the stream. Um, if you were gonna use larger machinery, would you be fine with that? It, it seems like a good idea to me. Let me, I should, it's a better question for Craig about uh, his comfort level with that added bit of scope and presumably a little bit of expense. Sure. and and. and Craig, if you'd be willing to answer that, I see Craig's on, right? If you could unmute him, uh, Rebecca, please. Just see if I can reach him by phone. He quick. should I'm be unmuted. Phone. I know on the phone it's a little tricky to do that, but. Hey, Brian, this is Bill. Go ahead, Bill. But um, I, I do believe that we need some additional structure of some sort, but I'm not sure it's up to the commission to define what that structure is. I think it's up to the applicant to come to us and, and tell us what they think will, will help protect, you know, the water resource that's under the demolition site. I think that's a very good point. I think the other thing to note is there is a condition in um, the order that explicitly states that um, if an alteration or an adverse impact does occur or an alteration impact to the resource area, something fails, there is an immediate cease and desist and the applicant is required to report that to the conservation department immediately and be working to remediate it. Um, so they have to stop all other work on site until that's remediated. And that's right in the order. How often do you monitor, Rebecca? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part. How often would you be monitoring the, uh, the construction site? So the commission likes to walk the line, or at least in the past, walk the line of not doing the applicant's consultant's job for them and doing inspections. But I mean, I am I can be on site more frequently if the commission would like. The commission, again, in the order has statements saying that upon phone call or upon notif written notification, 
they can go out or myself as the commission's agent can go out to inspect the site at any point. Um, and then also the commission has the ability and it's in the order drafted right now, the commission has the ability at any time to ask for supplemental information or the commission can request a specific expert or professional to be going out and providing those reports. Um, the commission has the ability to do that. So say the project gets going and the commission, you know, there's been an alteration or there's an impact to resource area or something fails and it's something that's repetitive, then that's, that's the time then I would start going out more frequently is when the site's not in compliance. If the site's been in compliance and the commission wants to ask and request for um, a report from the applicant, and then I would review that and then go out. Um, but that's typically anyways how that functions. If the commission wants me to go out more frequently, you know, that's your discretion to make that request, but I'm happy to do so if that's necessary. Um, how, ahead, how, much, how much, um, when they were removing the mobile station, how much was that done by hand and how much was that done by machinery? And what other precautions did they take? That is a good question. <laughs> I don't recall offhand. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I don't remember because it was during, it's probably done during the fall. So I don't know. But I knew they, I do remember they, they took a, well, if, if I'm remembering correctly, they took a number of steps. They were quite careful. They wanted to be quite careful. <laughs> Mr. Chair, if I may. Go ahead, please, Tim. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Just to let you know, uh, I have been in touch with Craig, and he did express that uh, he's comfortable. So we're, we're comfortable with the notion of adding uh, some plywood uh, to kind of reinforce the tarp, something a little more direct over the uh, masonry. Uh, uh, what are we calling that again? The river bed the, stream, the, river, the, the, the channel the channel the channel the channel yes. it's a perennial stream um, yeah. the other thing that was mentioned at the last meeting as well was to there was a comment about the portion of the structure that's directly over the brook was the most structurally sound portion of the entire um structure not to be redundant with that word but um, there was an ask if that could be left, if it was to be structurally sound before, or excuse me, temporarily or even permanently until the new structure is built. So I do know that's something that the commission did bring up at the last meeting. I don't know if any commission members felt strongly about that because that would potentially afford another protection as well. Sorry. Another thing that the Mr. Chair, another thing the board may wish to consider the um, uh, to the extent that, of course, we're concerned about the the life and limb of everybody involved. The uh, the 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 uh, reaching into that barn with um, a long arm bit of equipment is probably a little added measure of safety for uh, the people doing that work. Um, and an and another thing that that probably um, has at least a little bit of bearing um, to the extent that uh, the, that period of time in which the barn has been demoed uh, and there's not yet a new barn in its place, uh, that period will, will certainly be quite a bit shorter uh, mm -hmm. if, we can, if we can use um, you know, a little bit more a little bit more uh, equipment in there and would, would likely be a slightly more elongated period if, if we didn't. Okay. Um, we did hear also, Tim, from, from one of the other commission members when we were trying to get a hold of Craig too, that, that had a good point that, um, you know, we'd, we'd like to see enhanced stream channel protections if we're going to allow for an excavator and we'd like to mm -hmm. you know, limit where the excavator could be. Um, limiting where the excavator could be is pretty easy at tonight's meeting, but generally speaking, uh, enhanced stream protections is something that we'd like to see from the applicant, that we'd like to see their plan of what they know or think to be viable uh, and how they would go about doing it so then we can approve or disprove. 
So I think, and again, I'm going to put this out to the other commission members and, and I got to get moving through the agenda that either we can continue it and, and have you kind of put those additions in and re resubmit with those so we can see how you're doing it or we can close it and, and put it out to the commission to approve it as it's currently drafted and we all agreed on at the last meeting. Do you understand you, you can continue it and kind of write it out a little bit more or trying to explain those protections or we can close it and vote on it tonight as it stands. Um, and, and I just put those two options out because again, we have to start moving through the agenda. I really can't debate it much longer. Does that make sense to you? Would you like to continue it or would you like to close it? Mr. Chair, is that question to the applicant or to your board? Um, that, that's to the applicant. Um, if you'd like, I'll put it out to the board. Does that make sense to everybody on the commission? Do members of the commission want to keep debating more this evening or, or kind of go with what I had suggested? I suggest continuing just to get, because a lot of things have gone back and forth, but there's not one specific channel that's happening here. Sure. Yep. Anyone else? I would Let's agree go. with that too, Ryan. All right. So it, it looks like in general, the commission would prefer to continue it um, to give you a chance to just write up those added protections and, and what kind of machinery we're talking about now, what additional machinery and the added protections on the stream. Um, are you okay continuing until our next meeting? Yep. Okay. Um, and Rebecca, did I lose Rebecca? No, okay. I'm sorry. Um, did we set a next meeting date? Uh, we have July 19th. Yep. And I believe we're up to 745 at this point. Okay. In that case, I'd like to make a motion that we continue the public hearing for a notice of intent for a 711 slash 713 Main Street until our next public hearing, Tuesday, July 19th at 7.45 p.m. Um, do I hear a second for continuing? Second. All right, all those in favor, starting with Bill. Aye. Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Rebecca Iman and I as well. Wonderful, thank you. All right. All right, Rebecca, are you ready to continue? Yes, sorry, my mouse just went. No, you're, you're fine. Um, so we do have the applicant's representative present. I don't know if the commission wants any follow up from her, but um, on our Is next item, it's just the site visit. Yep. Okay. Um, and like I guess so the uh, Conservation Commission will now uh, continue the public hearing for a request for determination of applicability for Escalante International uh, test well installation on their golf course. Um, as Rebecca said, we, we did conduct a site visit. Um, any of the members that went on the site visit have any additional questions or comments regarding the RDA as it was drafted? No comments, additional comments, Brian. Okay. Uh, and Rebecca, I, I really didn't either. It, it seemed pretty cut and dry what they were trying to do, what the lasting impact's gonna be, where the currently mowed area is. And I think technically it's a few feet further away from the stream, which is a plus. Um, did you have any additional questions, comments? I did. I think the commission is comfortable with um, what is proposed, though my comments were relative to knowing that there isn't a fairly large aquifer over in that area. So posing the question of why it has to be directly adjacent to the stream, if it has to be moved anyway, why can't it be pushed further outside of the jurisdictional area? But um, as it was relayed on site, they did do some testing that, and there are they laid out their reasoning as to why it's placed at the site that it is and the fact that the existing well will be decommissioned and the infrastructure will be removed again down the line. 
So this is truly, in fact, a test well and not necessarily the permanent location. Okay. All right. Um, as I say, if the, if the applicant's here, if she wants to comment on that at all or anything she's heard, um, I know I think I'm fine, but um, if you have okay. some questions, yeah. I'm happy to answer them. Okay. Um, so uh, I already put it out to the commission. Any members of the public here tonight to comment or have questions on this particular hearing? Swing through, I'm not seeing any. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and close the public hearing for. Um, a request for determination of applicability for Escalante International. Do, do I hear a second for closing? Closing? Wow, I can't speak tonight. I'm sorry. Second. Second. All, right. All those in favor, starting with Bill. Aye. Lori? Aye. Paul? Aye. Jim? Aye. All right. And Rebecca, I am an aye as well. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we have a negative three determination for the abbreviated notice of, uh, sorry, negative three determination uh, for the request for determination of applicability for Escalante International with the following conditions added, um, that all erosion controls be in place and inspected by the town's conservation agent before work begins. Um, do I hear a second for that? Second. All, right. All those in favor, starting with Bill. Aye. Lori. Aye. Paul. I'm going to abstain. Okay. I, uh, I think I need to recuse myself from anything associated with international. Okay. As I'm a, I'm a member of the club, so I don't think I should participate in huh. this. Appreciate that. Uh, Jim. Aye. And Rebecca, I am an I as well. All right. All right. So I will um, have a copy ready for the commission to sign. And then once the commission signs it, I will contact Kelly and see where she would like the original to go. I can either mail it or you can pick it up in the office. And in which case, um, at that point, it will be issued and we can schedule a site visit, I think, or with the erosion controls. Sorry about my dogs. Um, we, there is a 10 day appeal period, but I am willing to certainly go out and review the site during that period, if that helps at all. Um, thank you very much. I just have a, a quick question. Your meeting on the 19th, is it in person or you don't know yet? It is in person as of today. If the governor changes or extends, it will most likely be remote. But so as of today and the way everything's being advertised for that, it will be at the Houghton building off of Main Street here in Bolton. Um, if that changes, the commission will be posting signage on the door as they're able to do that states where the meeting has changed to. And if that's remote, it will give information based on that or um, it will change the agenda can be, po the agenda has to be posted 48 hours in advance. So the commission has the ability to make that revision um, up to that time period. Um, okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Right. Um, Rebecca, do I need to open the ANRAD or can you just give us an update on the ANRAD? I can just give you an update. Right, yeah. Yep. Um, so the ANRAD, our peer review has been completed. Um, Ethan Sneesby of uh, BSC Group our soil scientist was out on site on Friday with the applicant's wetland scientist. Um, they reviewed the entirety of the site, spent basically half the day out there in depth going through everything. 
Um, I did get a preliminary email from our, excuse me, soil scientist and did discuss it with him over the phone. He is waiting to submit a, not waiting to submit a letter. He's working on submitting a letter. Um, so therefore the applicant has requested a continuation because some of the comments did also require them to change a couple flags in the field. So they, I would presume that they would be submitting an updated plan set along with our um, consultants or excuse me, soil scientist comments and letter. So they okay. have requested a continuation until the 19th. All right. Uh, in that case, unless anyone has any question or comment regarding this, reason we shouldn't continue, um, I'd like to make a motion that we continue the public hearing uh, regarding the abbreviated note or an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation for 580 Main Street until our next meeting, Tuesday, July 19th at 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, do I hear a second for continuing? Second. All of those in favor, starting with Bill. Aye. Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Rebecca, I am an I as well. Wonderful. All right. Next on the agenda, so we we had um, a oh, well, we had scheduled a discussion uh, regarding a shared driveway at forty two Harvard Road. Is yes. the applicant or a rep here? Yes, I'm here. Scott, could you, um, are, are you uh, the homeowner? Or are you a contractor? And could you give us an idea what you're looking to do? I'm the contractor slash owner currently that is building two homes that are being sold to um, owner occupants. Gotcha. And we're looking to put up five telephone poles along the driveway's edge via national grid so that we can get power to the sites. So what they're requesting today, Brian, um, they're working with Dillis and Roy, and they yep. submitted a plan set that shows the location of these poles, which are within the um, existing limits of work. So within the erosion control barrier and limit of work that was proposed and is being carried out on site of related to, I believe right now it's 3839, but originally it was part of 42 Harvard Road. So this was the back end piece yeah. that was subdivided off. Um, so their request is, does the commission consider the addition of these utility poles as a field amendment, or is this something they have to file an amended notice of intent or a new notice of intent for? Um, so that is why it's a discussion item at this time to see which way the commission would like them to um, continue. And basically, if it's a field amendment similar to what the commission's done before, it will be incorporated into the as-built document so that it is, and it still has to meet all the requirements yeah. under the existing order of conditions. Yeah. Um, I will say, and I'll, I'll put this out to the commission members too, that I, I was out there when, when they divided this lot. I, so I have actually been out on site. Um, I understand they are going to need to run power to it somehow. Um, I think I would be fine with it as a field amendment. Um, but I will put it out there to other commission members. Um, if you have thoughts or feelings one way or the other, if you'd like to see the property first, um, I, I'm open to either or. I'm fine with the field amendment. As long as you, you've looked at it, you know what it looks like, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to run power down to it somehow. And, I, you know, I, I think we can, uh, to a certain extent, determine where things go. But as Rebecca said, a lot of it's going to have to come up to the standards of the original NOI anyways. Um, and as it gets down to where the two houses are, it's, it's going to have to be in buffer zone. It doesn't have to be. But I can't see any other way for them running it, but I, you know, I, I could be wrong with that. I'm just picturing the property and how it was set. Um, I don't know, Re Rebecca, you, I, you may have been out there more recently than I have. Again, do you, do you foresee this? 
I was going to say it's hard to foresee anything, but um, do you, you know, could you see this as a field amendment? Which I could, you, yeah, I could. Um, I would say if the commission's choosing that, I would suggest that they make it conditional upon receiving a um, site can a current site conditions update or report just to be sure because I haven't been out in the past couple months but um, prior to they did fix some erosion control that um, hadn't failed but it was falling into disrepair shortly so um, just I think providing the commission with that report and the update of the site would be beneficial and then I think as long as everything's in compliance the commission has the ability to say it's a field amendment um, and they, it does seem from the plans that they do make a great effort in making the span across so that they're not putting it directly into a resource area. But to your point, Brian, you're right. As you get closer to the stream crossing, you do still have to span that um, with the utility line to get back to those houses. Um, so I'll, again, I'll put it out to commission members. Would, would you be comfortable if we did to ask for an updated uh, site report? Um, and then if everything was currently within compliance that we grant the, um, the placement of those electric poles um, as submitted this evening um, and uh, be allowed to be installed as a field amendment. Would everybody be comfortable with that? Would people wanna see something different? Different thoughts, ideas, questions? All right. And I would say, if it, oh, Jim, did you have a question? I'm sorry. No, all set. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'd say for the applicant, would, would you be amenable to that? Would you understand that to, to just an up-to-date site report, letting us know the, the situation on site so we can make sure everything is currently compliant? And then based, and if it is, um, would basically grant that that the uh, installation of those poles uh, could be done as a field amendment. Would that make that sense to you? Would you be amenable? Sorry, that should be fine. And and I'm assuming that's something I, I furnished to uh, the um, Rebecca's department there. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The conservation agent, or yeah. Rebecca. We can do um, that. Sure. Perfect. Um, Rebecca, the best way to memorialize this: uh, make a motion, have a roll call vote. All right. In that, in that case, I'd, I'd like to. Uh, like to call, oh, and I should say, I'm sorry. Are there any members of the public here tonight that want to comment on this or have any questions, comments, concerns? And I'm not seeing any. All right. In that case, uh, for members of the commission, um, I'd like to, um, I'd like to vote, uh, I'd like to call for a vote uh, to allow the uh, addition of a field amendment for 42 Harvard Road to include the electrical poles as identified and explained at this evening's meeting, uh, contingent upon the receipt of a current site evaluation and uh, the finding from the town's conservation area that the site is currently in compliance. Um, all those in favor, please say aye, and we'll start with Bill. Aye. Lori. Aye. Paul? Aye. Jim? Aye. And Rebecca, I'm and I as well. All right. All right. So I will await that report. Um, and then Thank you. once I get that, I will write up basically just a letter from the commission memorializing that they took this vote this evening so that it will be in our files and for your records as well. Great, thank you. All right, have a good night. Have a good evening. Um, all right, Rebecca, you good to continue? Yep. Okay, um, so next up this evening, we, we had on the agenda, we had a discussion uh, from Camp Resolute regarding uh, maintenance for the start of camp this year. Is the applicant or somebody representing the camp here this evening? They should be. I'm going to guess that it might be the Renata name. Maybe. Maybe. I'm trying to unmute them.
Maybe not. I was going to say, we can always table the discussion for now um, and just move on. Unless anyone here wants to claim Camp Resolute or anyone online currently. Oh, not me. So I'm not that person. I apologize. All right. Um, um, it's, yeah. it's not Mark. So we can, Mark is Hello. here. Hi. How are you? Okay. Good. Um, so Mar Mark's Craftsman's Village, correct? Yes. Or you can't, correct. okay. Um, all right. And we still don't see anybody for Camp Resolute. So let's just go ahead and table that for now. Yep. And moving on, the, the Golden Conservation Commission will now hear, hear a request for a certificate of compliance for Craftsman, Craftsman's Village, uh, DEP file number 112-0494. Hi, Mark, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, Rebecca, have you had a chance to go out to the site at all? Yes. <clears throat> and as far as you have seen, um, is everything in compliance? I know we did. I know there were some field amendments to this project, and we requested, you know, the final as built. It looks like you received, by judging by yes. your email, the final as built. Um, was everything um, in compliance or do, are there still any questions, comments, concerns? Um, so actually Mark and I had gone out on site during not the height of the pandemic, but we'll say sort of in the middle of the height um, to review some of the last items that need to be wrapped up and some of the field amendments that the commission had in fact allowed. Um, when he dropped off the as-built plans, we also went over the first set of plans that was filed with this um, parcel regarding the notice of intent. A hundred years and, ago, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then when he took it over, that notice of intent and how it's changed, um, because we had those plans, I did not, I stated that a lot of times the commission likes to see the overlay. I certainly do, but where we have the different sets of plans, it, there's a lot going on on site when you have the topography and um, the well lines and the utility lines. It yes. was just put everything. So this is actually a cleaner version, but what you've received and what I forwarded to you was this version and the version with absolutely everything on it. Um, the items jurisdictional to the Conservation Commission are certainly in compliance. I did not find any significant issues on site at this time um, and at the time of the site visit. I do know um, the when I'm driving by for other site visits, I always tend to look at the basin and the outflow in particular, and both of those look stable and look like they are functioning properly. Um, and I don't have any additional information at this time. Yep. The commission certainly has the ability to ask for any additional inspections or reports, but uh, the applicant has provided the final documents, the as-built documents and uh, reports along the way for this project. And um, Mark, could you just clarify, is this closed out with other departments already? And we're the last yeah. ones? Yep. Yeah, everything was closed out, um, and just giving the you know the last bit of work that we did was up in the the right hand corner, which was close to the wetlands. So we we needed to give that plenty of time to let the vegetation grow and make sure that everything was uh, was was safe and protected, and you know at the stage that you'd want to see it. So, and I I think you and I probably walked out there you know, six months ago and, and just candidly, I, I just, I lost track of it is the honest answer. So um, everything was done some time ago and this is just kind of part of uh, final wrapping up with, uh, with the project to make sure that future residents, we can get the COC on file so they don't have to worry about it for transferring property and such. But yes, we're in, in good shape with all other departments to the best of my knowledge. Excellent. All right. And Rebecca, you, you see no reason why we wouldn't issue a certificate. Uh, any commission members have any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts? I'm not seeing any. Um, I'd like to make uh, a motion that we issue 
the Certificate of Compliance for Craftsman's Village DEP file number 112-0494. Uh, do I hear a second for issuing? Second. All those in favor, starting with Bill? Aye. Lori? Aye. Paul? Aye. Jim? Aye. And Rebecca, I am an I as well. Great. Thank you very much. Right, um, thank you, Mark. Mark, when we have all of the signatures, I will follow up with you as to who it needs to be sent to for recording. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. It was a long project, not all from us, but a long project in general. But we appreciate all the time and attention. And it was certainly great, great working with you guys as always. So thanks again. Take care. Enjoy your summer. All right, Thank, Mark. You. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Um, all right. Commission members who were at the June 21st, 2022 meeting, um, did you have a chance to look through the minutes submitted for this evening's meeting? And if so, did you have any edits, comments, additions, subtractions? Um, and if not, do you feel you need any more time to read through the minutes? It's no one asking for time or questions. Uh, in that case, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes for our June 21st, 2022 meeting as drafted and submitted at this evening's meeting. Um, do I hear a second for minutes? A second. All right. All those in favor, uh, starting with Bill. Aye. Lori. Aye. Paul. I abstain. Stan. Jim. Aye. And Rebecca, I'm an I as well. Thank you. Um, I had a chance, I was going to say, I see we have on the agenda uh, going over the events on conservation land policy. Um, I read through it quickly before last meeting. I tried to give it a little bit longer of a read through after last meeting. Um, I don't really have many changes. I mean, it looks like you barred a lot of it from stuff that has worked in neighboring areas. Um, and there was nothing there that I felt strongly about changing or even really feeling how I would reword some of these things that, that may have thrown me a bit. Um, I'm kind of comfortable with it where it's at right now, at least to send it on to wherever it needs to go, if it's the select board or whoever else needs to look at and make sure it's fine so that we can go ahead and implement it or start that process. Um, but I want to ask other commission members, have you had a chance to read through it? Do you have additions, comments, questions, edits? Um, would you like Rebecca to send it back around? Um, but I think I'm kind of comfortable with it where it is and I'd like to see, you know, if it gets sent around to the town to kind of get implemented to see where uh, changes or pushback come from there. Um, other commission members have thoughts regarding it? Okay. In that case, Rebecca, I'd say, why don't we try to go move it forward as far as implementing it and see, uh, just let the other departments, the, the other relevant departments that need to see it, see it, um, and then just figure out those next steps, um, which I think will address the, our friend, the photographer who is next on the agenda, uh, kind of waiting for these to go through. But I mean, if, feel free if you want to pass along to them that it looks like we are trying to adopt them as they've been drafted and hopefully those will be coming into, into uh, the fold sooner rather than later. I can definitely do that. And that's for both the events and the activities? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, did you want to give us, if possible, an update on conservation land? Sure. Um, so pre-pandemic, if you recall, the commission allowed me to um, coordinate and collaborate with Mass Wildlife to try and do a fishing learn to fish clinic that they typically do throughout the state. And that failed miserably because suddenly everything was shut down very quickly the same week that we were trying to do this. So 
Um, now we have it scheduled for July 7th at Bower Springs. So in two days, um, myself, uh, some of the campers from Tom Denny Nature Camp will be participating. We do have members of the general public participating as well. Um, so if you would like to join, you can join. Um, it will start at 530. As you know, we do have parking at Bower Springs, but there will be a lot of people there. So just be mindful of how you're parking and making sure that you're parking if there's any um, road shoulder parking to make sure you're not obstructing traffic. Um, police off local police officers have been made aware of this event as well, just because I want to make sure everyone is safe and compliant with any um, considerations of that area in general. Um, again, Bower Springs is off of Flanagan Road, and this will be a Learn to Fish clinic open to anyone and everyone who wants to learn how to fish. You don't even need to know anything about fish. Um, and it is co-hosted with Mass Wildlife. So hopefully it goes well. Um, and that, do you want me to just run through the last couple? Please, if you would, okay. yeah. Um, I did also send around related to Bowers the um excuse me the estimate for the mowing that jim henderson comes out and conducts for the commission along with some edge work that they do so that was included in your packet um i wouldn't anticipate a vote today but i would like a vote if respectfully i would like a vote by the 19th just to be sure that we can contract that work or if we need to advertise it and get some other quotes for it we have the time to do so. Um, then, go ahead. Well, I, I was going to say along this, j just for new members, uh, when you see it in the packet, I, I'm trying to think how many years we've been using Henderson Striker now. Um, they kind of they they do landscaping basically with it with an eye towards conservation. Um, you know, they they have a pretty good track record of success. They have some uh, pretty impressive clients. Um, but, but they could also be a little bit more expensive depending on, on the, um, on the depth of what we're having them do. So it's, you know, it's worth looking through and reading them. I know for commission members that have been here for a while, we we're generally very comfortable with them. Um, and, and I know they've come in to even talk to us before, again, when we had a bunch of new members, um, but that's who Henderson Stryker is. And that's why we've, uh, generally been using them for the last, God, five, six years, Rebecca, I, I know it's been a while. I mean, it might even be longer than that. Yeah, and we have advertised to the work that needs to be done. Um, and because it's in conserv on conservation land, um, it's not necessarily a wide open area. Mm. Um, the invasive control, not using pest, um, herbicides, those things Jim is doing on some of the national park properties and on some other conservation land. So he's very in tune with the requirements of conservation commissions in what filings need to be done, if they need to be done. Um, so that's why it's just come to fruition that we've been able to use him as well. Um, but his, he's great to work with. Um, and he definitely has a lot of great experience too in this particular land use type. So, yeah. so, so I just a little, little yeah. more behind that, but if you would like to continue with the updates, I would greatly appreciate that. Sure. Um, so the town has received the Bolton trail connectivity improvement initiative, um, funding in the amount of just over $39,000. If you may recall, for those newer commission members, you may not recall, but for those who have been on the commission, um, this project was brought forward by a special interest group of our volunteer group, the Bolton Trails Committee, who do above and beyond work to help maintain our trails. And the special interest group was particularly interested in equestrian connectivity, but that also benefits multiple users, not just that specific user group. So over I think two meetings ago, the commission did permit through an order of conditions on three separate properties, a couple crossings to be either replaced or repaired. 
So where there is a relatively steep drop, railings will be placed on the crossing. Some of them will be widened and some of them will be engineered to support equestrian use. Um, so the benefit is we do have the funding now to do that and carry it out. So we will be certainly updating the commission along the way, but our wonderful uh, volunteer trails committee group and um, Cynthia Ayotte was the individual who came up with the idea. Um, again, particularly particular to her passion, but also relative to the multi-user benefit that it will have. So we did, we went to the award ceremony. Um, it was lovely out in Milton and we received funding. So very exciting. It will improve existing crossings that are in place. Um, some of them that actually really do need repair as you heard in the past meetings for those who were present. And for those who were not present, I'm certainly able to share with you um, the presentation slides that the Trails Committee had presented just so that you're, it's um, a refresher. So you can just email me after the meeting or tomorrow if you actually do want to take a look at that. Um, so the next item is the commission reorganization. And I will say <laughs> we did get, um, two commission members that said, Brian does a great job so at chair, um, but if he wants to step down to vice chair, that's fine. But they did not suggest someone for um, chair. Um, they, the two comments were made though, that they felt that the next individual who had been in place longest, which would be Lori, but they understand Lori seasonally has very difficult schedule. So then they placed it on Bill. Um, so with that being said, we do have this opportunity to reorganize the commission. We do need to name a chair and vice chair. Um, I know, I think it was the next meeting, Brian, you said you weren't available or maybe I'm mixing things up, but that's basically, yeah, vice I think it's chair two meetings now, yeah. but yes, yeah, it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Bill Payne, what do you think you want to be chair? Wouldn't it be fun? <clears throat> I'd love to be chair, but I can't, Brian. You sure? I'm, yeah, I'm going to be traveling quite a bit for the next six months. And in, in, I'll miss at least half of everything. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, Lori, I'm, I'm assuming you still have time constraints. Um, as of today, I work seven days a week. My next day, uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, and I, I hate to put it on either of our newer members. I'd love to make Jillian chair when she's not here. It shows her for missing a meeting. We could absolutely put her forward. Um, all right. I guess that's a, a, which which would kind of be unfair. Um, I, again, it's, it's an honor to do it. I'll complain about it to the end of time, but it, it is an honor to do it. And I appreciate that people don't think I'm, I'm stark raving mad and think I could continue to do it. Um, so I think I would I would happily accept that nomination to chair at least for one more year. Um, but we really got to work this year. And I thought we were really close with Emily who, who left us to become a select board member, which was great. We um, pushed her too far that way. <laughs> I, know, I was going to say she was all too, set. Too and prepared. Was, was too ready. Um, but we really should. Uh, and again, like a I would be happy to do a vice chair thing and just having more of us used to running meetings or have had to run meetings. I just think we function better going down the road. Um, and again, so, we'll, do it, we'll do it every fiscal year. So it's not like you have to do it for the next three years or five years. Like we can just trade off every year and uh, go ahead, Rebecca, what were you going to say? I was going to say some uh, boards and commissions actually cycle their chair, which causes some confusion at times, but it does to your just, the fact that you were saying everyone having a chance to have that experience, I think is helpful because I think you learn it's not as intimidating, dare I say, as yeah. you might think. Um, but that's also an option as well. I think the select board splits the fiscal year in half. So they, I don't know if everyone gets me. Anyways, the point is there is a rotational schedule that some commissions and boards do as well that is that works well, it might be a couple months or it might be half the year. Um, if you can't commit to the full year, 
but that's also an option. We've, to my knowledge, this commission has never done that, but the commission does have the ability. It doesn't mean it, it can't be done just because it's never been done before. Maybe we can, we can do that next year. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put out for nominations and if we don't get any nominations, I'll put in for just setting up the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> I think that could work. Um, all right, so, but that does leave us um, with vice chair. And, and again, Bill, I don't know if, if you think you're gonna be traveling too much for something like that. Um, I throw it out to Paul or Jim, like I think either one of you could do it. I understand your newer members. I would understand if you didn't want to, but I was gonna say anybody open to it, want to do it, think they can do it. I will be traveling, Brian, so I'm yeah. not sure I can do it. All right. Yeah, I'm still trying to get up to speed here, but you know, if 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 you know, happy to do it, Brian. If if you if you need someone, but um, uh, still trying to come up the curve here. So that that leaves us. We we can always throw it to Jillian, who who was it, but um, we can all pitch in. I was going to say, yeah, if we need to, or do we? Uh, yeah, I suppose we do have to put somebody. Well, I was going to say, Jim, if if you're willing. And for the most part, I, I should be able to make most meetings. Um, but if I can't, I think we should be able to get you great cheat sheets. I know I um, I rely a lot on talking to Rebecca and just ask walking through the agenda with Rebecca before we get started to get an idea. Um, okay. And I think you'd be fine. All right. In that case, uh, how should I do this, Rebecca? Um, uh, is it call for a vote? Boss, all right. Well, that, yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we elect Jim Garrity as the um, vice chair of the Bolton Conservation Commission for the fiscal year uh, 22 23. Um, all those in favor as Jim for, uh, co uh, for vice chair, please say aye, starting with Bill. Aye. Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right. And I think it's a great idea. I'll say aye as well. Um, and then I I'd like to uh, uh, nominate myself to be chair of the Bolton Conservation Commission for the um, fiscal year 2022-2023 year. Um, all those in favor, please say aye, starting with Bill. Aye. Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Rebecca, I will say I as well. Wonderful. Um, the next couple, the next two items are just the items that will remain on the agenda until the projects are complete or until we get a volunteer land steward. Um, so currently, again, we're entered, we wrapped up year one. Um, we're still touching base with our regional coordinator from the MVP um, program at the state level. This is specifically for the Nashville River Communities Resilient Lands Management Project entering into year two. Um, so there will be, this is focused more on turf and ornamental where year one was focused on forests and resilient lands management specific to forests within the communities of Clinton and our community of Bolton. So we will be looking for individuals who are interested in um, ornamental and turf land management within those two towns. So if you are interested, please feel free to reach out to me and let me know and I will make sure to get you in contact with our consultant team. Uh, those meetings were, I think, maybe two, there were two core meetings and then we met every, we met bi-weekly with the team so not we being our volunteers, but the team did. Um, and so basically we reach out to that core group that meets once or twice, and then we conduct site visits with that core group, get some feedback. And then at the end, we do some public outreach beyond that specific to the turf and ornamental. And then where it will be the end of the entirety of the project as well, we will do a final wrap up um, public outreach component also. 
Um, but it should be fun. And I think this is a lot of great information related to climate resilient landscapes and how we can be implementing it on a residential scale and a more uh, commercial or larger scales as well. That's all I have. Well, thank you. Um, and, and just to, reversing up for a minute, I just want to say congratulations and thank you to, to yourself, Rebecca, but to uh, Cynthia Ayot and to the Trails Committee. That is quite impressive that they got the grant and that they're willing to undertake the work and it is deeply appreciated. And I thank everyone who put in the time and attention on that one. Um, all right, that said, um, is there any new business from commission members? Any lyrical poems somebody wants to put out there on the public record? Seeing none, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, hereby close the public meeting of the, this public meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. Um, do I hear a second for closing? I second. All those in favor, starting second. with Bill. Aye. Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Rebecca, I am an I as well. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Take care.